Hello and welcome to another episode of the Vadvani Viewpoint podcast. Today's conversation is going to be all about startups. My name is Manali Shah and today we have with us Kajal Malik, the co-founder and chief sales officer of Pick My Work. Pick My Work is a gig platform that sources and trains agents to help digital companies acquire clients on a paper task basis. This means that the digital companies acquire customers at a low acquisition cost. Kajal, welcome to the show and thank you so much for taking the time out. Thank you Manali, it was such a pleasure to be here and talk about uh, you know our journey on the project and everything. Wonderful. So let's dive right in. Before Pick My Work became the company that we see today, you had a startup called Rikalta with the same co-founders Vidyarthi Bari Reddy and Utsav Bhattacharya ji. So how has the journey been and more importantly what were the telltale signs that you identified that made you realize that it's time to pivot now? Right, uh, so in 2017 we started Rikalta. Uh, we all were passionate campus placement managers in the in our own colleges. Vidyarthi and I were from FMS, Utsav was from Ahmedabad. So uh, it it since the passion for campus placement so there it converted into you know starting up Rikalta, which rev, which was supposed to revolutionize the way campus placements are done in India. And uh, of course, with that passion, we started and uh, we started selling to various colleges. And uh, the adoption was good. We were adopted by some very good names across India. Tier one, tier two colleges were adopting the product. Um, a, a year into Rikalta, we realized that the payment cycles uh, are are very longer, you know, for a product like this. Um, majorly because some of the some of the colleges that we are reaching out to are government colleges. Even if they're not government colleges, it's very difficult to sell to institutions in India. So uh, that, that's one thing that we realized one year into, uh, you know, Rikalta. We went on. We were still selling, uh, and uh, it was uh, it was sold to about uh, fifty colleges, all major colleges in India. And we were pumped that you know we can uh, definitely we can make this make this uh, vision a reality. We were very sure about it. And uh, after selling to tier one and tier two colleges, we started re- reaching out to colleges in the interlands of the country, tier three, tier four colleges, where we thought that you know um, this this product can make a lot of difference even if it's making a delta difference over 10 to 15 percent in placements that that would still mean a lot to these colleges uh, when we started reaching out and meeting uh, people or uh, campus placement officers students in those colleges we realized that uh, a they don't have placements um, even if it is there it's for 10 to 20 percent of the people so the focus on placements is lesser and B, we realized people over there, uh, the students, they're not really looking to uh, go outside of their own city and get placed. They're happy with a 15k to 20k salary that they might get in their own city versus a 30-35k that they they probably get in Mumbai and Delhi because they realize that uh, the cost of living in those cities is also very high. And they want to. They don't want to leave their city. So this was all happening in the two, two and a half years of you know uh, getting getting to scale up Rakalta. And we realized that okay, one thing it is going to be extremely difficult to scale up a product like this, considering that the placements don't exist, right? And uh, second, these these kids don't really want placements where the companies are giving placements. Right. So is there a way we could uh, actually build opportunities for these? Uh, kids wherever they are and you got to know that you know they're working for uh, they're, they're working uh, for merchant acquisition which is uh, primarily sales uh, for various uh, various companies which had started with uh, digital wallets and uh, that time uh, we thought that what if everybody could get this opportunity every kid could get this opportunity to get some uh, to get to work a whenever they want to to uh, and uh, b uh, in their own city and right. uh, get some good experience, right? So if they want to uh, get a good full-time job later, yeah. 
they they should be able to get it and that 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 was initially the thought process and then when we started you know uh, we we saw that uh, gig as a model had done so well for uber ola zomato it was doing well for zomato at that point when i'm, I'm talking about 2019 here and 2019 uh, i mean gig gig had sort of fought, you know uh, had a very good rise Uh, in the country, and uh, that's when we thought, uh, okay, how how about gigifying sales completely? You pay per task. When the task is done, the co- the co- companies pay us, and we pass on, uh, you know, uh, an amount to the giggers for doing the on field work for us. So it it started with a very small pilot that we did in 2019, and the success of that pilot made us realize that the impact. of a startup like this could be huge and um, it was uh, the, the the great thing at that point of time was we got bigger projects and we started doing well in those projects and we started making a difference uh, our clients were happy the giggers were happy and uh, th- this was a small trial that we did in 2019 which has now become a proper business model for us in uh, you know uh, 2022 this pivot began with that trial and with the insight that came from going to the hinterlands of the country visiting the real bharat okay that's great to know so my next question is about having clearly defined roles within the founding team a lot of the business advice that we see today is about having roles that are complementary skill sets that are complementary so now at pick my work you look into sales and marketing Utsav looks into daily operations and business growth while Vidyarthi looks into technology and product development so how has it been having co-founders with complementary skill sets and how has it helped pick my work so from the perspective of uh, an outsider we the three of us are MBAs so they they may not think that the skill sets are complementary but uh, when you work with people you realize that how different you are from each other and uh, during rikalta of course when you uh, when you're a founder it's very difficult to uh, at that point of time know what role you're going to be working on because you're almost working on everything when you start a company right uh, somebody is working right. on uh, the company registered somebody is working on the finances somebody is working on daily, uh, running the daily show it's it's a mix and you're kind of right. doing everything initially the in the first 2 3 months right post which uh, you you start to realize uh, that you know i i know that i do this well and uh, this is going to be my responsibility you reach there so uh, initially it was difficult for us to figure out uh, a, a cto but we finally found we were lucky to find a uh, head of engineering who is you know who's is going to be with us for the fifth year now so wow. that that way we got lucky Three MBAs plus a head of engineering who is who's risen in the organization and has been with us from Recruiter days to now pick my work. Uh, about our own three complementary skills, uh, so we we realized uh, how different we were uh, right after pitching to a client in uh, in Recruiter. So we went to college, we pitched. Once he comes out, he says, "Wow, what a pitch! It's definitely going to convert." With that, he's like, oh, "It may convert, it may not convert," and I was like, "No way, this is happening." <laughs> so we we realize that we have three different people, right? <laughs> Very different people, and uh, of course the skill sets were complementary. I I come from marketing and sales background. Uh, Vidhati has uh, has led product uh, you know growth as a consultant to various companies with Deloitte, and Utsav has had a huge job. Uh, Uh, operations experience with CK Birla and him being a doctor also he's you know managed those day to day uh, stress scenarios so which which only a medical doctor in india can uh, would see right uh, yeah. and that to in a government hospital he's done so um, uh, we when utsav took up this responsibility he almost uh, was a natural at it when i took up marketing and uh, business development uh, for the company i i was a natural at, at it and uh, with that of course being a ceo he also takes care of investment apart from product uh product also came naturally to him so this these uh, having i completely agree to the point that you know the the founders in the first few months only are supposed to figure out what they're going to do and what they're going to deliver to the company and uh, it can't just run on passion it has to run on uh, clear deliverables that you give initially because it's it's impossible to hire people to do everything right initially a cash crunch is there be if you can't do it who else is going to do it so first you have to do it yourself and then you hire people to do it for you 
so we've always had that belief too so yeah uh, uh, in 2 3 months only we figured out what our responsibilities are going to be and how we how complementary we are as founders right this does lead to more fights too but <laughs> at the end of the day uh, i mean we we know how to sit together and uh, you know ensure that the company runs right so would you recommend that initially of course while a founder does uh, everything that uh, across functions that needs to be done would you recommend that while looking for a co-founder the skill sets have to be different or do you think that that's not a necessity while it's beneficial what are, what's your take on that uh, a passion for the idea is is the must right uh, over a period of time uh, if you so the three of us knew each other well so uh, we knew that uh, you know i i knew that vidhati will will not be taking care of marketing and business development this is this is something that i have done and i have experience in so i, I knew this is going to be a natural role for me over a period of time in the startup and uh, vidhati also knew what is going to be a natural role for him he was from the day one he was making the wireframes of the product and trying to talk to the customers and figure out uh, uh, the feedback from the customers on the wireframes we developing it so we knew that he's going to take up that role and it's of uh, i mean the from the time he joined in the first 15 days only he had taken the the role of uh, you know managing the daily operation so it it sort of uh, considering we knew each other we knew where we're going to land up in so uh, passion of course is the foremost because uh, when things are not well things are not going well what is going to keep you going is passion right and uh, the, of course clearly defined roles in that in that way is is second for me because uh, when you are driven by that passion and considering uh, you know we knew each other we knew that we are capable of handling almost everything when we put effort into it right there was a time when we could not find our head, head of engineering and we started learning coding too <laughs> that point <laughs> of time, we got lucky and we found somebody so uh, yeah uh, nothing nothing will replace that but over eight, in in a few months it has to be like this that you have to have purely defined roles because accountability otherwise will never set in at the company so accountability Uh, they say right that the the major reason why a startup doesn't work out is because co-founders can't gel with each other and if if you don't have clear accountability it's going to be difficult to gel as well right right that's a great point accountability is the bottom line and is the clearly defining factor here so that's a great point thanks for that today pick my work works with clients such as misho free charge and indus bank But how do you back the first client? What's your advice for startups looking to acquire their first few clients or customers? So uh, technically, when you pivot, it sort of becomes a second startup, right? So we've done this for two startups. We got our first client for Recall Time, of course. Again, a first client uh, later for Pick My Work. So uh, what helps usually is your own network. when you are starting up so if it's not your network it could be your co-founder's network or you get a co-founder who you know has has a good network um crazy amount of being there on linkedin reaching out to people helps too but the the first client has to be somebody who is ready to put a leap of faith in you so if it is that that person uh, or that company is coming from your network it could be your your ne- network it could be your investors network it could be your friend or friend uh, you know it could be anything uh, so if if it's coming from that a the multiple uh, benefits to it number one um, you can actually develop product with them considering they've come from a friend or friend friend or somebody you know right exactly. so you build the product with them you get feedback from them you keep improving the product or the services that you're providing that's number one a uh, very uh, very important criteria on uh, to especially in the early stages when you're building the product right with the client on the go on uh, number uh, number 2 it it also helps uh, with the uh, with the things as well so th- when when you're developing a, or giving a product or so, uh, service there are going to be thick and thin in the relationship right so things may not always work out and uh, that that client would remain with you with your things as well most of the time our first client was the client that stayed with us for a longer period of time a because they believed 
they they have to believe a little more in the in the person than the product too right, right. and then right. the product has to deliver what the person promised right so that that you have to ensure for the client so of course there is uh, uh, mehnat aap wo nahi kar sakte apne network se mehnat karni padegi right. if it's not a first client which came uh, uh, which came via linkedin or other uh, other routes hmm. it is going to be the fifth or the tenth client so right uh, after you make your first client you have to be on the lookout at all times again it could come from uh, it could be reaching out to everybody in net in your network it could be uh, posting daily on linkedin it could be using a sales navigator it could be finding other ways uh, to get email ids phone numbers of people who are relevant to you and then you know uh, being respectful and reaching out to them in in when they would want to be reached out to because again yeah. you're a startup right you cannot really piss people off at that yeah. at that point of Okay. So all of that is is always going to be there. But if the first in in my opinion, in my experience, if the first client comes from the network, from the people you know, it could it could be anybody. It it really helps in in building a stable product and a stable startup. Right, that's great, uh, and that's very valuable advice for the young startup founders that are tuning in. So the gig economy in India has been on an upward trend. What are your thoughts on gig economy being an ideal way to support uh, and empower underemployed or unemployed youth in India and boost job creation? Right. Uh, so, the economy is on the rise. There are like multiple surveys which are telling that there are multiple consulting firms which are doing, uh, you know, uh, which are writing materials on it. So. that that's something which has come up recently but india uh, as a country was always had gig workers right? Uh, right a lot of people were actually on contractual payment it just it never came out formally that's that's the thing so uh, will india have a good great gig economy uh, it was it was not really a question of will it have it it was question of when and how it's going to happen right so over the last few years it's it's sort of uh, grown up and uh, there are multiple reasons to it right uh, one one major reason that drove it is the pandemic uh, so yeah. companies realized that they cannot uh, put i mean they cannot really scale up with huge costs which are fixed costs so they th- wanted to variableize the cost so that that was one major reason for uh, companies to look at gig work favorably okay. from all angles and not just the few delivery or writing gigs that they were initially looking at right so they, right. they started looking at gig favorably from other angles people also realized when they were working from home that it it's not really a bad idea uh to yeah. have your own time in your own hands right and decide when you want to work and how much you want to earn right. in a month if you want to earn more in a month you do a little more and if you if you're cool you know the next month you want to attend yeah. your sister's wedding you 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 have enough money from the previous month and you don't really have to take take leave from your boss right and yeah. uh, when we were uh, so when while we were starting pick my work we actually did a lot of research to find out what did not work uh for the sales people um in in the current models so one thing that we figured was uh, they had less transparency uh it was always difficult to know how um, uh, it was always difficult to know whatever they've done is it going to be attributed to them or not before the end of the month when mm-hmm. the incentives are okay so the transparency was less uh trust from the boss in them was also very less irrespective of what you, what you are where you are um in a in sales your boss always assumes that you are freeloading if your numbers are not happening right so that was another thing and people who are working on the field earning about 20 25k a month daily gali galoch manage karna is 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 absolutely normal for them if they do not get it one day they may feel awkward right unfortunately that was the scenario and uh, let's say they want uh, they would they want to go to their own state to attend a wedding uh, their own sister's wedding or anything any any major reason it could be somebody's health in the family right um they would take chutti but they would just be thrown out of the company in that process right so we we saw that there were a lot of uh, unfortunate incidents or the un- there were unfortunate ways in which uh, sales was being managed and we thought okay let's 
plus pick up sales and there is there is definitely a possibility of gig finding it because a lot of uh, countries had uh, started uh, countries are ahead of us with respect to gig right um and managing gig work in uh, white collar or gray collar uh, force so we by 2019 we had enough data we knew what's going to happen uh during the pandemic um we when we started pick my work of course uh, it it was bootstrap uh during pandemic we had to somehow manage with the, the revenues that we had made pre pandemic and uh, our our idea was light by uh all right yeah <laughs> okay our idea was actually like by uh, by emergent ventures and who felt that during the pandemic this this idea can make so much of a difference and uh, that is why they put some grant money in us it kept us going uh, was it enough for us to uh, it was not even enough for us to you know last probably a month or two but it was enough for it was a tough on our idea right somebody said right. that this idea is good and it can make a difference that was number 1 number 2 it, it it did give us a leeway for a month right and uh, and next month uh, the state started opening up and uh, you know we were everywhere and we were making revenues again so uh, with respect to bootstrapping when you're starting up unless you are you have a huge network you know you're starting at about 35 you have a huge network and people really believe in your idea or you 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 are a great founder who is very good at pitching or your idea is such that you know even uh, in the pre um, uh, pre revenue stage your idea can get funded i mean it it will get funded in those cases but bootstrapping is majorly the way to go for a lot of founders right and it was the way yeah. to go for us uh, with the respect to ricalta also and with respect to pick my work also and uh, we always thought that at the end of the day um revenues are going to make a lot of difference so our focus was with respect to ricalta also from the day one we we never give out our product for free we always charge people for it so revenue was going to be a major driver for us we always thought about it and uh, that that feeling passed on to pick my work as well and we we never decided to do anything for free we were we wanted to get paid because a it's important to run the company that way b people will value your services a little more when they pay for it right they okay. use it properly and yeah. uh, they will uh, they, they'll engage with you a little more right when they're paying for it right so that was always the thought process and uh, i mean when you when you start up you should be okay with the fact that you're going to part part with the savings that you have and uh, there's going to be this opportunity cost of not initially having right. your salary as well right so you when you enter into this you you have to prepare yourself and then enter it and enter into it and how much you prepare <laughs> uh when the, the first month when you do not get the salary right it's it's still going to hurt right so all of that is going to be uh, that, all of that is going to happen come come what uh come yeah. what may you know uh, that that's, yeah. that's not going to be part of the process yes yes so uh, as much as you can learn about it and you know uh, reduce the shock that comes from the blow <laughs> <laughs> it is great, but you're going to feel it it's part and parcel of startup life uh, of course you're going to need funding when you want to scale up and your idea has shown promise but i my suggestion to everybody would be to go the traditional way as much as possible uh, if you uh, if you if you're making revenue people of course will believe a little more in you right uh, and our our business was such where we could make revenue there are businesses which are which, which for for uh, those businesses it's impossible to make revenue in the first month or the first 12 yeah. uh, first 12 months, first 36 months it's almost right. impossible right. so um you know it could be ev based business so it's right. difficult right right so there there it is understandable but for businesses like ours where revenue is a possibility you should definitely focus on revenue and you should focus on it till you do not need money for expansion so uh, you have to be mentally ready for all the downturns which are going to come for all the highs which are going to come uh, your way and uh, yeah i mean uh, we 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 thought we'd participate in competitions or, or we'll try to get grant money as much as possible because sometimes um during your rows this also helps if every month is not the month where you make the maximum revenue right sometimes there're going to be lows and you still have to uh, uh continue so we we actually did uh, from recalter time and even during pick my work we kept participating in a few competitions where there is going to be a cash prize and you know uh, we'll pitch our idea right. 
and we'll make people believe in our idea and um, earn a little bit of money here and there as yeah. well so that that's great i don't think that these uh, contests which have a cash reward get talked about enough so uh, while you started off uh, yeah absolutely so while you started off bootstrapping uh, with 60 lakhs what are the different avenues that startups can take uh, to uh, get some initial money going and then eventually look at scaling up what are the different avenues so the number one thing is your own savings friends and family right so that that's one if they believe in your idea even if they don't believe in your idea they believe in your they'll probably uh, invest money right. that's that's how usually friends and family work right uh, then uh, around the 3 4 months into recalta we realized that competitions could be a great way to get some pr and um, and to get our idea out there and earn some money so we participated in this thing called ebay startup cup uh, where the comp- uh, where the cash prize was somewhere close to 7 8 lakhs and that point of time it mattered a lot so we gave it our all and we actually won the competition we got a lot of pr also from that that right. actually led to a lot of influx of uh, uh, you know inbound leads so oh, great. so much positivity can come around from you know participating and winning these competitions so if whenever you get an opportunity to go out there and present idea i think uh, we should all catch it especially in the early days and uh, try to make maximum out of it so that's that's another way to of course uh, get money so revenue of course is right. the number one but initially your uh, pe- friends family should, i mean uh, in india thoda sharam aata hai puchne mein but uh, <laughs> <laughs> the good yeah. thing is uh, when you ask for it you realize so many people believe in you and they're ready to put right. a part of a few thousands or a couple of lakhs to to get you there right, right. so that that is also a very good feeling uh so yeah and the competitions like i mentioned so right. go out there get some pr right that's a great idea and i hope that uh, more and more people can uh, you know just give it a shot and uh, hopefully we earn some uh, decent revenue from it all right so that was a wonderful conversation with kajal malik co-founder and chief sales officer at pick my work we spoke about pivoting having the right co-founders bootstrapping and starting off and the gig economy in india Stay tuned for more such insightful conversations. My name is Manali Shah and I'll see you in the next one.